Hey guys, it's Britt and welcome back to my channel. Today we are making nacho cheese kale chips. This is packed full of flavor and seriously my favorite way to eat kale. I love this. They store great, they travel well, and it's pretty easy to make. So I'm really excited for you guys to check out this recipe. All of the measurements are down in our description box below and also on our website. So make sure you head over there to check it out and stay tuned to the end of this recipe. But this is just such a hit in our house that I know it's going to be in yours as well. All right, guys, we're going to make some kale chips. So in a large bowl, go ahead and de-stem. I did two large bunches of kale. I like a lot of kale chips. They're pretty easy to eat, and so I like to kind of just do a real big bunch so I have a bunch left over and my husband also is a big fan so they don't last too long in our house um, so that's why I'm doing a lot here and I'm showing you just how you really easily can uh, make your kale chips really simple this part we're just de-ribbing de the kale or stripping the kale and you just hold it at the bottom and hold the rib part of the kale and pull and you'll see that it separates super easy and so it took me literally probably like not even a minute to do two bunches of kale um very very simple and when we do kale salads this is also the same same idea we do as well you'll also see me massage the kale i'm just doing that because it helps decrease the size so when I have my large bowl it really does help make it a more manageable amount. You also can rip up your kale pieces here into small to small bite sized pieces if you want at this point and yeah this is a great activity to get your kids involved. If you've ever made a raw kale salad I always tell people to massage your kale it makes it a little bit more tender in when you go to bite into it but here really it's just to make it more manageable and rip up any pieces that are, are too large. And then go ahead and grab a blender. We're making our nacho cheese sauce from our, from our recipe page. A slightly different, but pretty much the exact same recipe. But it is one cup of water. You can use any blender for this. Does not have to be a Vitamix. I have half a cup of raw cashews. You also can use half a cup of a white bean in place. Two cloves of garlic. I have our lemon juice and our rice vinegar in here. So it's one teaspoon of rice vinegar and one tablespoon of lemon juice. I have one tablespoon of a white miso. That's our salt substitute. I also have one roasted red bell pepper. I just get it out of a jar, um, but you can roast your own. And then our seasoning. So it is three tablespoons of nutritional yeast, one teaspoon of onion powder, and one tablespoon of smoked paprika. Blend that together until the cashews or the white beans and everything is nice and smooth and you've got your nacho cheese sauce. So easy and simple and packed full of flavor. All right, then make sure your hands again are clean. We should have been clean when we de-stemmed our kale. You know, make sure they're clean when you're doing this part, but I'm gonna massage our kale just to make it again more manageable because it is a lot of kale to work with. And then you're going to dump in the nacho cheese sauce and massage it for maybe a minute or two. It does not take long. And I find that your hands are your best tool for this. It really helps drive that sauce into your kale. Into your kale. So you can, of course, like use a spoon and be nice and neat about it. But I like using my hands when I cook and it uh, really does make a difference. So I just took a minute and massaged my kale for, for a minute to two really to get that nacho cheese sauce deep into the kale. It does make a difference. And if you have kids, this is a great activity for them too. And um, yeah, it just takes, takes a minute and then you can wash your hands after. Uh, go ahead and get a parchment lined baking sheet or silicone baking, baking pan. You don't need to use any oil for this. I just use parchment paper, super easy. And you want to spread out your kale chips. Now, not all of that huge bunch is going to cook. We have to do this kind of in, in sectors, and you can rip up your kale chips too at this point. Um, but we don't want to overcrowd, so I'm just kind of spreading them out so that they'll bake evenly. You can, like I said, do this in kind of um, rotation. So once this is done, I, I continued until I had no more kale chips. And it, it's easy. I just let 
the kale kind of hang out in the bowl until it's their turn to get baked. But I preheated our oven to 300 degrees and I'm letting these crisp up for around 20 minutes. Depending on your oven, it might need to go a little bit more, but this is the texture you want it to be. And they came out perfect. And I just love this recipe because it's so easy. Um, but I cook it at 300 just because I put nuts in here. If you're using white beans, you can cook it at a higher heat for less amount of time. You just kind of want to keep an eye on it, but um, I find that 300 at 20 minutes works perfect for our kale chips that we've done. I seriously ate a whole batch of these while waiting for the rest of them to cook. <laughs> they are my favorite. They are full of flavor. They're crispy. They're delicious. They travel well. And I know your family is going to love them as much as mine does. So make sure you subscribe. And I make hopefully plant-based recipes twice a week, every week, that are SOS-free, oil-free, and delicious, and family-approved. And these are definitely on the top of that list. So I would love to have you as part of our community. We also have a free Facebook group that is wonderful. And yeah, love to have you around. So I'm going to go enjoy a big batch of kale chips, and I'll see you guys very soon in the next one, but these are seriously one of my favorite things. I'll see you guys very soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.